Hey guys, and welcome to my first developer video for Serious Remnants 2? Question mark? It's not really the sequel, it's more like a revival. Uh, if you guys don't know, I made a mod pack a while ago called Serious Remnants, and the premise of the pack was kind of that, well, to be honest, I just wanted to have a mod pack that messes with embers and roots. That, that, those were the two mods at the time that I wanted to play with. And I wanted more like a lightweight small mod pack that kind of like tries out those mods. But um, over time I added a bit more stuff and made it somewhat difficult, <laughs> etc. And it became kind of its its own little thing here that I really liked. So um, that pack was for 1.11, I believe it was. And I wanted to recreate it in 1.12, just bring it up to date and also uh, improve it and add a little bit to it. Um, there was this whole storyline of the world is kind of abandoned. There used to be dwarves, right, because embers, and for some reason they disappeared, and you kind of were supposed to figure out why, because, you know, follow the remnants or something. That was kind of the premise, but I never implemented any of the story stuff. I had some custom structures um, for, like, loot and uh, traveling and such, but I wonder, actually, if we, one of them is still in this. Actually, all of them are still in this, but the loot ones don't work properly. The tower should still work. I'd run into it at one point, but uh, yeah, so, I, so I've so i been, uh, you know, working on trying to recreate this in 1.12 and make it a bit better, make it a bit fancier, and also try to add the story stuff to it, right? So I just want to, in this video, go over a little bit of, like, what my idea is for this pack, what the plans are, and probably go over a couple of things, like the, uh, the world or terrain generation and that kind of stuff. Hopefully it won't be too long. I don't want this to be very long. Um, so it's still very early in development, but um, I'm mostly like going through a bunch of mods and trying to figure out which ones I want to use, which ones I don't want to use. And again, it's going to be heavily, you know, using embers. There's no more roots in here. I took out roots. I am going to try out Nature's Aura. That was a suggestion from Warred. He mentioned this might be a good mod. Uh, I haven't messed with this at all, so I'm going to check this out. And originally I had plans of using Thorncraft. Uh, but I think I might change my mind on this because I actually have a plan for the sequel to this pack already. <laughs> and that was also one of the reasons why I started uh, working on this. I really wanted to make a mod pack that is based around the between lands. And I have many plans already. And, you know, I keep like a list of things I want to do, ideas, that kind of stuff for this like between land pack. And... It's going to involve like some other mods like Thorncraft and stuff too. And it's going to be a pack where you are just in the between ends. There's no way to get out of it. Um, and it's kind of supposed to be the story sequel to this pack. There's going to be a reason why you're in the be between ends that ties back to this pack. This is kind of like the prequel, I suppose. Um, so yeah, so I've been uh, thinking about, I think... Ooh, look at this secret stuff here. Just checking out some things. Flame, huh? I've been uh, thinking about using... Thorncraft in a Betweenlands pack instead, because I think it just fits better than in this pack. Um, well, no, it still works in this pack too, but I, I kind of need like a magic mod in the Betweenlands one too. In that mod pack, so I figured I'll use um, I'll use the Thorncraft mod over there and... Spooky. And I might use uh, Astro Sorcery in here instead. Um, Astro Sorcery and... Thorncraft actually work pretty well together if you want to do both of them at the same time. The cool thing about both of them is that Thorncraft can be used to automate Astro Sorcery stuff. Like, uh, you know, you have to like put, uh, I don't know, right click certain blocks with stuff and the golems can actually do that. But I don't want to use both mods in one pack just because, like I said, I want to save some of this for the next pack and then also I think it's just too much content. I, do, I still kind of want to have this somewhat lightweight this is a really cool area uh this is from biome bundles i believe so biome bundles is what i'm going to be using for terrain and the world and it just creates some really nice looking landscapes but also these really cool random structures with all kinds of cool loot and one thing there's one issue i have in this pack and you can actually see this if i break this if i break any blocks they just kind of vanish and this time there were some particles there were some this time there weren't there's something going on where my particles stop working after a while. And I had this in Ceftec too. It's not just this pack. Um, I'm not sure what it is, but an anvil trap. 
<laughs> nice. Um, okay, anyway, let's get out of here. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is. I'm still trying to figure it out if that's like a mod causing it or if it's a setting with my... I don't know, with my PC or something is odd. Um, if anyone happens to know what that could be, let me know. But yeah, so I'm still deciding what mods to use, but I'm, I'm really certain on some of them. Um, one thing I've been just working on recently is actually kind of just going through the early game and ore processing stuff. And a lot of that is going to be inspired by Terra Firmacraft. Not exactly the same, but similar. And yeah, you get some really cool landscapes here. So, for example, let's go over some of this. And yeah, there are some like bushes here that you can use to farm uh, to get food early on, because food is going to be difficult. Uh, you can also see in the top left corner that is extended days, so days are longer. Nights, uh, I haven't decided if I want to make them long or not. This time you can sleep. I might add this thing again from the first series remnants where you get a debuff if you sleep and lots of hunger, but we'll see. So, yeah. Um, this took me a long time to figure out the early game. Early game is always something I love and I want to extend it and make it fun and not be too overshadowed by tech later down the road. So in the end I decided to go with Primal Core because Primal Core adds just so many cool things for early game. I'm going to be disabling a bunch though. It's not going to be all in here. Right now it's it's still in here, I haven't disabled them yet. But, um, for example, you know, like tools like pickaxes or something, these are going to be disabled for most most likely, uh, at least early on, like the... You can't even see the wooden one or the stone one in here right now. Because um, they're disabled completely. There are some other things, like these guys I still need to disable. Lots to do still, but yeah. No, no wooden, no stone tools. You have to use flint stuff from uh, Primal Tag early on, these guys. And I guess we can just go into game mode zero and try it out a little bit. And yes, you start with low health again, because why not? I'm also currently testing a mod called Unnatural Absorption, which seems interesting. It kind of gets rid of the um, health regen or something, or it, it overholds the system. But um, yeah, it's something I just added. I haven't tried it yet. So let's ignore it for now. But uh, punching trees, no go. Can't do that, right? So early on. If you ever played with Primal uh, Core, you probably know how this works, but you punch grass, you get these fiber things, and I also added a rare drop of like flint, so sometimes you can get flint from punching grass, because sometimes finding gravel takes a while, um, so I just added that to the, to the loot list, but you can find gravel too, of course, and I think I do, do I have a recipe in here currently that makes, yeah, two... This one was four, <laughs> so I have to, I think this is the one I want to use, I haven't removed the other one yet, so. Four pieces of gravel, you can also get your flint, and then you would use a flint, go to like a hard rock surface, and uh, punch it, right, like, just hit it. And then you get these little pieces here, and then with the plant fiber you can make, um, oops, come on, these twines. And then with twines you can make your tools, your early one, like the hatchet. Uh, there it is, right? Just like this. Oh, is that a hole? <laughs> Whoops. I'll just give a give us a hatchet. There we go. I made I totally made a hatchet. Right? And then you can go chop down trees. Now, for trees, I use this mod called Chop Down. It actually makes the trees fall. Um I've been thinking about this. I was like, hmm, is this annoying? Is this fun? But personally I like it. I like it a lot, and so I'm gonna use it. And later on you can, well, yeah, later on you can use like things like tree farms, right? If I go with Astro Sorcery, there's a tree farm. If I go with Thorncraft, there are golems, I can do it. So, you know, no, no big deal. And it does work on these giant trees too. And sometimes you can create like natural bridges across rivers or something. Boom. <laughs> it's it's kind of, I like it. I like it, personally. All right. Uh, if you go like this, can't do it, right? We have to make a... Um, Actually, I might not. Yeah, that might work if I do it like this. Yeah, we might need a... Or we make a chopping board. Now, there are two kinds. Are both still enabled? No, I guess I have only one enabled. Um, There's some... There's like horsepower in here that has a chopping block and cuisine, which is like a cooking mod I want to use. But, you know, you would use the same thing of like... I wonder if they fixed this by now. Let me see. Yeah, chopping down stuff. Cool. So you can hold this in a offhand and do it too now. That wasn't working before. You know, that's how you get your planks early on. Later on, of course, there's going to be ways to do it better. You do get your crafting bench. 
Uh, you can also see there was this crafting bench from Primal Core. I might disable this. We'll see. Like I said, I haven't touched Primal Core. Uh, can't fix the recipe too much yet. And then sticks, for example, doesn't work either. You would have to do it in here. Um, but the whole point of it is like, you know, later, the first tech mod you go into is going to be better with mods. And that kind of stuff has like a saw and everything that lets you do this automatically, right? So, the, and those are like the high tech, or those are like the tech mods. It's better with mods and embers. It's kind of like your tech, right? To make anything. It's not, there's nothing, no immersive engineering or thermal whatever or whatever, right? It's just all... Low tech. I love the low tech stuff. <laughs> I want this to be, you know, very survival -y. You are, you're supposed to be kind of this like adventurer, archaeologist, whatever you want to call yourself. Um, there is going to be a little bit of a, like you don't actually spawn in the overworld. You spawn in a separate void dimension that has like a little bit of a structure uh, in there. And it's all um, in adventure mode. So you can't build or break anything. And that's just like to kind of introduce yourself to this pack of like, you know, you discover this world or something, you discover this temple you're in with a portal that leads to this world. And in the end, you go through a portal and end up in the overworld. And that's kind of the beginning. And then later on down the road, uh, for example, embers will be locked away. You won't be able to access embers right away until you get through, you know, better with mods or something, which at one point unlocks something, probably a, uh, a book from Miscraft. Miscraft is in here, but I'm just going to be using the linking books mostly and the teleporters. Um, a book from a quest reward that, when you use it, teleports you in the same void dimension you came from, but kind of like a different position. It's a different room, I guess, right? And back into adventure mode, and you have to go through a little bit of a trial, and at the end you find something that, if you use it, unlocks embers. So that's kind of the goal of, like, how you unlock these mods in here, right? But let's assume you would have, you know, made some stuff, you made some tools early on, you know, you would play pretty basic Minecraft early on, and except for using stone tools, you use flint tools. To get anything better, um, you know, you would head downstairs into the, into the caves, and I'm actually, the caves are very much done, almost, I think. I'm pretty happy with them, and I did quite a bit with them. You can see there's a lot of, like, mossy uh, stone, cobblestone, gravel. And I'm just going to give myself a night vision potion because we have uh, this mod in here that makes everything extremely dark. Like you can't see at all. It's very dark. I like it. <laughs> but um, I like the underground. It's going to look yellow because of this night vision potion effect. But yeah, there's going to be a lot of, um, you know, we have these stalactites and stalagmites. Is there any way down here? And I'm using... I think it's called Wally's Caves or something. I'm not sure, but it's supposed to make caves a lot bigger too. But um, yeah, let's just do this and find a big cave system, right? Here we go. Let's just go into this one, right? Um, but yeah, I made it so that there's going to be a lot of like random stuff. Like you can find some magma blocks deeper down, lots of these cobblestone stuff. Um, I still need to adjust some of these blocks though. I think I'm going to change them up a bit, but... Um, oops. Oh yeah, I have my mod in here that makes blocks break. I have like a blocks physics mod that I made. Uh, I don't use the latest version though, so it's not quite working properly, but it's gonna get updated. And this Wally's whatever caves mod also adds some of these biomes where you have like these underground forests. Is this an actual dungeon? Oh no, this is a, uh, well, yeah, sort of. There's an enemy. <laughs> We're just gonna ignore for now. But yeah, you can see it's like, um, not quite in good areas actually, to be honest, but yeah, we have these pillars. There are like these leaves down here. There's going to be um, cobwebs all around. Like I made it so that cobwebs kind of can spawn like an ore. All the ores itself are very scarce. You can see we don't find many ores. Like this is iron ore. This is, is that copper? Can't tell. No, it's azurite. It's so like different colors because of the night effect, night vision. Let's just put down a torch. See it changes the color. Um, and all of these ores only spawn on the on the uh, on the cave walls, right? Like you can always see them on the on the outside. If you would go in here and like keep digging, you wouldn't find anything. You can't strip mine. Strip mining is totally useless in this. I want people to be able to explore caves rather than sit there and just dig a tunnel, uh, dig a tunnel like you know in a straight line, generated strangely. Um, so instead, yeah, you just go through your caves and you'll find everything you need exposed on the 
on the walls, right? So you can just grab it. And it's not going to be a lot either. Like, um, I increased the rate a little bit. I might turn it down a bit more again, but, you know, it's not going to be much. And if you look at this, for example, this is iron ore. Right now, I can't mine this, right? Even though we have a flint tool, which is kind of equivalent to stone, iron actually has a higher mining level in this than other uh, ores like copper. So copper is something you would want to get early on. Tin and they spawn up higher as well so you don't have to go super da uh, deep down. You find some glowstone here. There's a spawner. Oop, that was weird. Block physics. <laughs> so you can still find random things and such. And I may have to limit some of these items too. Um, but yeah, so you're supposed to go and find you know, copper and that kind of stuff first. I think that's uh, Galena. Yeah, that's like lead and silver, I believe. And then instead of using a furnace, you know, and I mean, you can make a furnace, but instead of cooking stuff in here, like let's say we got some copper ore, it's going to be this stuff here from geolysis. Uh, let's remove this. It You won't be able to smelt this in the furnace. You have to um, use a sariras <laughs> or something, whatever it's called, from primal uh from primal core early on right we're gonna use this now this is one of the things where i'm like i'm still not 100 percent sure i'm still like debating the reason for that is is because i started out using the charcoal pit mod and basically you would create these like kilns where you put this stuff in you get some uh charcoal or coal right break it and it tells you here that will give you now 24 uh, copper nuggets and yes these don't give ingots they give like nuggets and you would have to like place them down grab some i think it's uh oh which one did i use twines maybe is twines the one nope hmm. I, I think i have it uh, set to something that currently isn't enabled but you would do that you would put planks on top similar to terra firma craft set this on fire and after a while uh, you get like a cook kiln back and if you break it you get your uh, your nuggets, right? So that was the original way of doing it, and I'm still debating if I want to keep that or not, but I figure I might actually just go with the Sariras from from Primal Core. They're pretty cool. You just, you know, you enter your stuff in there. You uh, you can close it. You can set these on fire. They cook. Takes a while. And uh, they're not very expensive to make, because they only need, like, uh, either mud or there's, like, different types. You can also get this Adobe brick if you want to. Uh, there's terracotta, etc. But I probably would just go with the mud one or something. Super cheap to make. Uh, and the recipe that's shown here, right, that if I go back to here, it's not correct. That's still stuff I need to edit. Like I said, you would only get a couple of nuggets. You can see, I think it's three nuggets, right? Uh, no, it's four nuggets. It's four nuggets per copper cluster. So uh, it would only be four in here too. Although I guess I might even reduce this to like three or something and just have the melter from embers be more efficient. I don't know yet. Uh, but yeah, that's that's your way of getting uh, copper and tin and that kind of stuff, which then you can use to make better tools. Now, how do you make better tools? Because there won't be, I mean, it might be in here, copper pick, but these will be disabled, right? And this is something I'm really happy about the way I've done this now. So I'm trying to combine three different mods. <laughs> it sounds crazy, maybe, but it's going to be three different mods. Oh, well, yeah, I guess three different. So there's a Sarah Rerust to cook the ores, right? And then let's say we got some copper ingots. Then you need to go ahead, take uh, like stone materials or something, and create a kiln, okay? Which is something like this. It's like a like a structure like this, surrounded by hard uh, rock. Uh, and then you would use charcoal and places. Very similar to terraforming craft. Right, this is from a mod called Tinker's Foregoing, which is there to try to aim to be like, uh, you know, like Terra Firmacraft. <laughs> so, very similar. And I think he just updated this, where you can use the fire starter from Charcoal Pit. I asked him to do that, and yes, he did it. Oh, that's beautiful. Awesome. So, you can start this now with the with this guy, too, because that's like an early flint and steel kind of thing. Like, whoosh, right. Although it doesn't, I guess it's not consuming it in this case, but that's okay. So it turns it on like this, and then you would place your ingots in here. And then over time, it gets heated up, right? You have to like heat up these ingots. Uh, you also need 
if you go back here, you need to make these anvils, right? They're important, so a bit of resource uh, cost there. You make an anvil, boink. You also need a tool. I think you can use, I think it has to be the copper one too. It has to always be like a specific material. You put this in there. And once this is hot enough, you can see at 600 degrees, it's like able to work. And I think at 900 copper melts or something. So you have to kind of be in between. I made it so that it heats up faster than it cools down now because the cooling down happened really fast and I didn't like that. But basically what you have to do is make, oh, I can't see this in here, huh? If we go to custom, no, was it? Uh, Content tweaker. These are items I added. They don't have textures yet, except for the copper one, because I wanted to show this off. If, for example, we wanted to make an Etsy. An Etsy is a... I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this right, but it's like a shovel and axe in one, okay? It's the only item I currently have here as a texture to test it out. You will have to use the forging station to create this. And hopefully I used the right to I think copper should work, yeah. Yeah, mining level... Co uh, Hopefully it works, we'll see. <laughs> it doesn't exactly show you what you need. Um, but basically you do it the same way you would do it in Terraformer Craft. Now if you haven't played Terraformer Craft, of course, that makes no sense, but let me just wait here. Oh, it melts at 1000 degrees, okay. Well, let's just assume we have this and you can see it cools down a lot uh, slower. You have to put this in here, select what you want, right? Which part, and I'm gonna select the, there it is. The Etsy item, uh, it's the only recipe I added so far. And then you have to like recreate this pattern here, right? Like these push it forward, these push it to the side. So you kind of have to like go over here and then do this and then hammer. Uh, and then this one, right? So I'm like, wait, no, wait, which order is that? That always scares me, but there we go. So I did it, right? <laughs> so that you have to like align these things. Um, that's what you usually have to do in Terraformer Craft too. And I left that stuff in there for too long and it melted. Well, now you have this piece. What do you do with this piece? Well, I'm glad you asked. You go to the third mod. <laughs> you go to, uh, sorry, Tetra. Tetra is a really cool mod I discovered the other day that I always wanted to try out, but I never, well, I discovered a while ago, but I never like knew when or where and which pack. It's a very interesting mod. What you do, well, actually, technically you start with a normal crafting bench, I think. And you make this lock mallet, it's kind of like your multi-tool for this, and you right-click a workbench, it turns it into this workbench. And I will probably change the texture. And then you get this crazy interface. Let's grab another hammer. Because uh, I think either this hammer or like a wooden pickaxe is going to be the uh, template tool you modify, I suppose. So uh, that makes sense in a second. So you place in your tool you want to modify. In this case, we're just going to say this mallet. And then you can change out parts, similar to like, you know, the uh, Tinker's Construct, you can change out the handle. And then if you click here, you can uh, replace a flimsy handle with a tool handle and then select which material. If you hover over the material, it shows you what it changes. For example, if I use wood here, it gives it a bit more durability, less swing speed, right? And that's the only material I currently have. I guess if I have maybe cobble, uh, it might show another one. Oops, there we go. If we look this up again, uh, click on here. No, cobble's not one. I think one of, maybe stone? Nah. Otherwise, it would be, like, highlighted. Um, but then you can go to, like, one of those tool sides. You have the left and the right side. So you can have two different tool parts on one tool. And you can, in this case, select the Etsy. And now the Etsy's highlighted. See? You could also use the wooden, the stone, and the cobble. But I'll probably remove these. Just so you have to use the metal stuff, right? And then you just attach this, right? You put this in here. Again, shows you what it does. It shows you it counts as a hammer right now. It will then count as an axe and also as a shovel. So it really goes down a bit, but whatever. And then craft it. Boom. Now you have this crazy looking tool <laughs> that has an Etsy that now counts as a shovel. And an axe. Perfect, right? So that's kind of how you make tools. And, you know, you would, you would have to get your... Uh, iron tool so that you can make an iron pickaxe that way and actually I'm not sure if iron is going to be enabled. Let's double check this here. Uh, sorry, not iron, copper. If I go in here, I might have missed Mr. Config too much that it won't work now. Pickaxe hat. Uh, no, we can do it here. Copper. You can also put it at the back. Oh, but that needs an upgraded hammer. So yeah, you actually have to upgrade 
your hammer first. That's why I made a second one. With the wooden mallet, select mallet again, and then select the higher material, copper, for example. Uh, no, not copper, sorry, stone. Stone is the first, second tier. And here too. There we go. And now you can see this hammer can do crafts of level two. My god, you're scary. <laughs> That's almost freaky, man. Okay, now we can put this in here. Select the pickaxe set. And boink. There we go. Now we have a shovel, an axe, and a pickaxe. And one, supposedly. Let's see if that works. Yeah, see? I can mine it. So now, in theory, I should be able to grab this iron ore from Geolysis. It's actually called Hematite. Uh, let's just place this down here. Assume it spawned here. Yeah, now I can mine it. Still slow, but you can mine it, right? And then, here's the difference. While these Sariras, and this is why I'm still debating if I want to use Sariras or not. While these Sariras were able to cook up the lower tier ores, like copper, tin, silver, that kind of stuff. They won't be able to do iron. They won't be able to smell these guys. For this, you need something better. Um... And that will be the bloomery. A bloomery is also very terrifying, my crafty. Is going to be bronze blocks. So you have to make bronze first, which right now you can't do. Again, that's going to be uh, a recipe with primal core eventually um, in these guys or something. If if I would use charcoal pit, then making bronze is actually a lot easier uh, because bronze is what well, copper and tin. I think it's like. Um, yeah, let's get some copper. I wonder if that actually works right now. Tin. Ore. Uh, there it is. I think it's actually that ratio, maybe? 3 to 1. Yeah, that makes Bronx nuggets. Um, But I think, yeah, if I go with these guys, then I'll add that to those as well. Oh, who's hurting me? Uh, one of the mods in here is making animals aggressive. I need to figure out which one. Sorry, chicken. You attacked me first. Um, but yeah, once you have bronze, you can make the bloomery. And the bloomery also requires a bit of a structure that has to be made out of adobe uh, bricks. These guys here from Earth's work. And um, you just make them with clay, sand, uh, piles, and some leaf stuff in the center here. Uh, or I think, if again, if I go with primal core, I think I'll make it so that you can use these this drying basin here. Is someone gonna attack me again? Where you can uh, make these like adobe brick mix and then you put this into this brick mold, you get wet bricks, then you have to dry them, and then you can use this. I think this might make more sense. And I, th I, th I think that might actually be the block I used for the bloomery. I'm not entirely sure. But it's also a little bit of a structure you create here. I'm just gonna like uh, wing it. Something like this. And you can make this a couple of blocks tall. The taller it is, the more ore you can put in. And then you put the bloomery at the front. Okay, that's the wrong structure. I think it's the wrong brick, actually. I think it has to be this one. Because uh, I think I added this when I didn't have primal core in here yet. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have to decide still if I want to use primal core stuff for this or not. It's always a back and forth with me. I always like, there's like cons and pros for both, you know, either using it or not using it. Yeah, there we go, that works. So you have it like this, right? You can open this. Um, you will need probably some ladders or something, some way of getting up there, ideally. Whoop. And what you would do here is just take your iron ore. Let's, uh, let's actually just get a bit here so we can demonstrate this a bit better. And you toss in like some and it creates this pile of ore. And then you toss in some fuel. There we go. That's all the way up here. I think I guess... Can I add more? No, that's the highest we can do. Uh, and then uh, we go down again. And you get your fire starter like before. And just... Oh, I think you have to shift right click. And there we go. It's active, right? And it shows you if you right click what it will produce. 96 iron nuggets there. And right now I have the times turned down, so uh, that thing won't take as long to run now, just for testing purposes. But normally this will take a while. And that will that's going to be how you process iron and gold and 
whatever other materials you need early on that are a bit more tougher. Um, and then later on, once you get embers, which will be after you go through better with mods, then you can get the melter from embers and make things much more easily, right? But until then, you have to kind of use these uh, machines. But um, yeah, I don't know. I think I might end up using these because they have more uses too, and they're pretty neat looking. I like the way they work. So I think I might go with this. And there we go. It's done. Yeah, and then you just break it. I think you can use your fists. I never tried. Let's find out. It takes forever, though, it seems. Now that takes so long. Let's use this thing. <laughs> there we go. And then you get it back. All right. Kind of lands in there. I guess you can break this and go inside or set up something to get them out of there. But yeah, you also get a bit of gravel. That's like the slack. I probably modify this a bit. And you get your iron nuggets. And right now, it's messing a bit with this stuff because um, it's giving me Thorncraft nuggets. And Thorncraft nuggets apparently you can't put back into ingots. For whatever reason, but you know, that's just a or conf or dictionary conflict, so something I need to fix. And if you know, if I take out Thorncraft, that's not a problem anyway. All right, but I guess that will be it for this uh, episode. I uh, just wanted to show you this. Um, I saw some old quest in here still. These are from the 1.11 version still. Just wanted to show you this a little bit, you know, just uh. Give you a rough idea about what this pack is going to be like um, and what my plans are. And so what I'm going to do with this series, once in a while when I have something to show, I'm going to make a video and it's going to be more streamlined. I know right now it was a bit all over the place, maybe a bit rushed, but you know I wanted to make sure that, that I get to show you guys uh, some things and explain the, the pack properly. But uh, the other videos are going to be like of a specific change or addition or what have you, right? Um, but yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.